Welcome one and all to Tech Tuesday, the best way to start your early to mid work week, bringing you the latest news in tech. Today is May 13th, 2025. Let's dive right in to the news of the past week. Google, Meta, OpenAI, Anthropic, X, DeepSeek. If you have a device that can connect to the internet at all, or have watched any ounce of news, it is basically a certainty that you have heard of some, if not all, of these companies. More specifically, you may have heard of some of the products that these companies have been coming out with recently, such as Gemini, Llama, ChatGPT, Claude, Grok, and, well, DeepSeek. If you have been on the internet at all in the past three years, avoiding hearing any of these names was practically impossible. Now, we live in a world where AI-generated ads, scams, and general AI slop fills social media feeds. So much so that memes have become popular emphasizing the insane nature of this AI slop, where the new Pope says that AI poses a quote, challenge for humanity, where generative AI is seen as a top cybersecurity priority, but simultaneously making these AI tools is being framed as an arms race that the US needs to win. All the while, advancements in the AI field seem to be occurring at a rate faster than any one individual can keep up with, and shows no signs of slowing down. And again, it feels like all of this happened in just the past three years. And it just feels like we should be asking, how on earth did all of this happen? How did we go from Clippy, the lovable Microsoft Word mascot that was happy to help you write your documents, to- What can I get started for you today? Can I get 18,000 water cups, please? Okay, what can I get for you? So. Today, I wanted to talk about where this all started, how we got here, and where we're headed. Or at least, where I think we're headed. And hopefully, I can teach you some things along the way. And I want to start out by saying the term AI has gone through some, frankly, upsetting semantic narrowing. The term now is used to almost singularly refer to generative AI models. That is, your chatbots, your image and video generation models etc. In fact, just googling the term AI gives you a sense of what the word has come to mean. Doing so will result in pictures of robots, multicolored renders of brains sitting on computer chips, holograms, or just general science fiction nonsense. And I feel like people fail to remember that AI can be something as simple as a checkers bot. In fact, the definition of AI is simply a computational system that performs tasks associated with human intelligence. While that can include things like conversation, it also means things like recognizing faces in images, like most smartphones have been able to do for over a decade now, like the ability for enemies in video games to be controlled by the computer, a feature of video games that has existed practically since their inception, and the ability to track figures moving in a video which is something that is now very commonly used for video editing. The point is, the term AI has kind of lost its true meaning among the general public. And as a computer science major, that kind of upsets me. AI is so much more than chatbots, but now you simply cannot use the term without people completely misunderstanding what you mean half the time. But I digress. My point is, AI didn't start here. <laughs> But now, it's time to talk about how we actually got to this point. And while we could start all the way back in the 1980s when AI technology truly started taking off, I think a much better place to start is 2010, when a certain website began to gain popularity. Cleverbot. In case you aren't familiar, Cleverbot was a website where you could go to chat with, essentially, an AI chatbot. However, this chatbot was notable for its sometimes completely irrelevant and otherwise out-of-pocket responses. Now, I imagine that the main cause for Cleverbot's strange responses is due to the fact that it is incorrectly assuming that all the conversations happening are with well-intended humans, and that there's nobody there trying to troll the chatbot. Essentially, people are responding with bizarre things, and as a result, it is learning to it itself respond with bizarre things. But this type of sort of proto-generative model that is Cleverbot is basically how most AI models were made during the time, and it would take some major developments in AI technology in order to get us to the next step. Fast forward to 2015, and OpenAI was founded by Sam Altman and Elon Musk. 
to do research into these exact issues. Now, it is very important to point out that OpenAI was not the only company doing research in this uh, field. IBM developed the Watson AI that beat two Jeopardy pros on the show back in 2011. But OpenAI certainly took the lead in breakthroughs related to generative AI chatbots. At least very early on, they, they took the lead. But that doesn't mean they didn't get any help along the way. In 2017, Google released a research paper called Attention is All You Need. And if there is one thing you take away from this video, it is that this paper, this singular paper, is the backbone of the entire AI industry. Without this paper, we would not be where we are in terms of AI technology today, for better or for worse. And if you want to understand what attention is and why it's so important to making these AI models work, there is a wonderful series of videos by the YouTuber 3Blue1Brown that I would highly recommend. They are incredibly well done. I mean, he has a ton of subscribers and deservedly so. But the main point is that attention allows for AI models to be trained orders and orders of magnitude faster than how they were able to be trained prior. So this effectively put OpenAI into high gear for their research. Over the next few years, OpenAI created a bunch of in-house models and published a lot of research papers, all leading up to November 30th, 2022, when ChatGPT first released GPT 3.5 as a sort of closed beta that you had to sign up for, and later they released it publicly. And from here, I think we all kind of know the rest, but here are the highlights. A few months later, in 2023, OpenAI added a subscription model to ChatGPT. Then over the next two months, ChatGPT was integrated into Bing, and OpenAI introduced the ChatGPT API, which allowed developers to directly integrate the chatbot's functionality into their own applications, along with releasing GPT-4. Over the following month, both Anthropic and Google launched their ChatGPT competitors named Claude and Bard, later renamed to Gemini, respectively. Over the next year, ChatGPT implemented a variety of features largely geared toward developers, but notably added a feature in Alpha that gave ChatGPT the ability to search the web before responding. In May of 2024, OpenAI introduced GPT-4.0, which was a much more powerful model, and also had features like image and file input and the ability to talk to the model using both voice recognition and a text-to-speech feature, available only for Pro members. Late last year, OpenAI released GPT-01, and I think by this point, we're all under the sort of iPhone effect where it just feels like there are so many new releases with changes that are not really that noticeable to the average user. So I feel like we've all kind of mostly stopped caring about the more recent developments. But remember, that is only for the chatbot models. On the other hand, you have image generation and video generation. And again, we could start all the way back in the 70s, but I think a better place to start is 2014. Because in 2014, a group of researchers from the University of Montreal developed the General Adversarial Network, or GAN for short. These networks are where we began to see the first real applications of image generation for things like deepfakes, for examples, which quickly became used in movies for various purposes, and also the infamous thispersondoesnotexist.com, which generates an image of a non-existent person each time you refresh the page. This website uses a GAN model to generate their images, and this website existed far before a lot of the now very popular image generation sites ever existed. Now, let's jump all the way to 2021, where we saw the release of DALI, by OpenAI, along with the introduction of the famous avocado chair, which is shown here. Half a year later, we saw the introduction of diffusion models, which are now sort of the standard as far as image generation goes, though these early examples show that there was certainly a long way to go before you got anything that wasn't, frankly, disturbing. As time went on, we began to see better image generation models emerge, like Dolly 2. But still, these models were locked behind paywalls. That is, until Dolly Mini was released, giving people online a free way to generate images, albeit the images were very low quality, uncanny, and sometimes even downright disturbing to look at. But from that point forward, stable diffusion became the standard, and we're now at the point 
where there are several free options for generating images using models like ChatGPT or Grok. The potential copyright infringement shown in this image is an entirely different issue, but one that I felt like I should still mention since it is actually an ongoing debate. All of that brings us to where we are today. But obviously, discussing only the history of the technology does not do a good job of describing the impact that these technologies have had on the world. So let's talk a little bit about that. These days, it feels like avoiding AI entirely is nearly impossible. In social media feeds, there will be AI-generated posts or AI-generated comments generated by bot accounts. On Google, depending on what you search, your results will be filled with AI images or even AI-generated news stories or articles which may not be based on any truth whatsoever. It feels like every day, the dead internet theory is becoming more and more true. And in the past few weeks of Tech Tuesday, we have discussed the different concerning things going on in the world of AI. A big one being Google recently announcing that they would be allowing children under the age of 13 to access their Gemini AI models, as well as things like Apple announcing their plans to introduce an AI doctor into their health app and the potential risks that could be associated with. But with all this stuff happening, what does that mean about the future of these technologies? Well, from my perspective, it seems sort of like a war on two fronts, if you will. On one end, you have the front that is pushing the bounds of these technologies and racing to have the most innovations in the AI field. And on the other end, you have the battle to maintain and regulate these technologies as they develop to keep the internet and its users safe and frankly also sane. Starting first with how these technologies will advance in the future, I can't say for certain what developments will occur, but what I can say is that they will continue to happen fast. There's many reasons for this, but I think the main reason is that the race for these technological developments is increasingly being viewed from the angle of democratic versus communist from both the companies developing the technology as well as governments themselves. I feel like this concern started when DeepSeek, a China-based company, released their first AI model, proving to be comparable to AI's best models, if not better, training for much less cost and training much faster than OpenAI's models, which quickly caused a panic within the US-based AI companies. In fact, just this past week, OpenAI announced a new initiative they are calling OpenAI for Countries, with the goal being to help other countries develop AI technologies. And throughout this announcement, there are several mentions of emphasizing democratic processes and democratic values in these new AI technologies. Additionally, Congress held a hearing this past week where the heads of many companies at the forefront of these AI technologies were present, where they stressed the need for some sort of regulatory framework to allow these companies to develop their technology. So to me, this all kind of gives the same vibes as like the space race, just instead of rockets, this time it's software, and instead of Russia, this time it's China. But let's not forget about the other side, which is the battle to keep the usage of these new technologies under control enough to just keep the internet usable. I'm certain this will continue to be an issue far into the future, but I do think it is incredibly important to put an emphasis on getting all of this under control as early as possible. And we're certainly starting to see companies do this. For example, within the past week, YouTube started cracking down on AI-generated movie trailers, which I don't know about you, but I have seen so many of these fake trailers and it annoys the heck out of me every single time I see one. So this news certainly makes me happy. But the fight to be able to easily tell what is AI and what is human-made online will continue to be an uphill battle as AI tech continues to develop. So if you wanna hear my two cents, I'll say this. AI is a tool and it should be treated as such. The same way that Microsoft Word is a tool, but it doesn't write your essays. The same way that a calculator is a tool, but it doesn't come up with the equations. AI is a tool and you should not let AI technology become a replacement for the work that you do. 
I'll be transparent. I have used ChatGPT. It's good for when I have a question about how a maybe particular piece of code works, or if I need some inspiration for a very particular thing that I may not be able to find on Google. Sometimes it works great and other times not so much. I think the two most important things are to recognize that AI does not have all the answers and to learn to identify where the AI may be falling short in its responses. But also you should never under any circumstances go out of your way to release AI generated content as your own. You'll never see me do that. And I encourage you to do the same because at the very least, if you can't do anything to combat the mass amounts of AI slop being put onto the internet, you can at least do your part to make sure you aren't yourself contributing to it. But that's about all I have to say. It's a sort of battle that each person can fight in their own way, and I doubt it's going to be an easy one. But anyhow, that brings us to the end of Tech Tuesday. So thank you very much for watching, and tune in next week to see what happens next in the world of tech. See you next time.